Hello, Ritesh. Hey, hi. Hi. Uh, this is Samir and Melinda won't be joining today. They are traveling. Hi, Pratish. Hi, Yi. Hey, hi. Hi, Freeman. Yeah, good morning and uh, good afternoon. <laughs> good morning. Good morning to you. Uh, Pritesh, are you in the PST time zone? Yep, I'm in PST. Okay. I'm in Seattle, yeah. Okay, great. How about uh, you? Uh, I mean, I'm in Shanghai, China. <laughs> okay. The <laughs> um, famous, uh, yeah, there are multiple I, time zones in China, right? Yeah, same time zone, uh, female and I. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm work, I'm based in Beijing, and uh, I think we have uh, 15 hours gap between yep. Seattle yeah. and, uh, and China. Yeah. Yeah, yes. roughly 15. Wait for a while for mm -hmm. Samir, Milind, and oh, uh, Samir and Milind won't be joining today. Today they are okay. traveling, so they won't be joining okay. today. Okay, so they're traveling. Yeah. I think there is only a few topics related to the release of Alpha Three, and. Uh, Maybe you can go through and uh, see how do you think of it? Yeah, sure. Uh, no problem. Uh, I'm not sure whether David from our side will join. Uh, but we can start anyway. Uh, okay, so uh, I added, uh, I think, three items. Uh, for the agenda, talking about the upper three, as you know that we, we plan to release uh, upper three uh, by next uh, Friday, right? But uh, after uh, I checked the, uh, the PRs, there are still two uh, important PRs needed to be merged into upper three. Otherwise, it will uh, break the current notation sign and verify. So that means if we release the upper three, uh, once the user um, detect this issue, they will uh, report it and we needed to provide the fix and actually we know it won't work. So uh, the first item uh, lists uh, these two PRs we, we need to merge uh, into the upper three. And we need, uh, according to our review process, we need uh, one from uh, AWS to, to uh, review review it, then we can uh, ask a maintainer to, to merge it. Yep, I think one of us already already got approval from Rakesh. So that has- uh, You mean one. which one? Uh, 104. Maybe 104? Yeah. Uh, So I think Rakesh approved it like three hours ago, something like that. Six hours ago, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's uh, it's a uh, million. Okay. Uh, let me check another one. Yeah, the other one, I'm not able to open the other PR. The link is invalid, something like that. Okay, let, let me maybe let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. It will be better for everyone. See it. Uh, can you see my screen? Uh, the GitHub page? Uh, yep. Okay, this one actually, uh, I just found that uh, Minion added a comment. So maybe uh, uh, Shui, uh, later you can ask uh, uh, the team to, to check this comment. 
Sure, I will ping Rakesh tomorrow morning about this. Yeah. Okay, it's uh, Rakesh. It's Rakesh, Rakesh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll, I'll take a note of that and I'll ping Rakesh tomorrow. Okay. And then I think these two PRs, one is it is reviewed without comments. Uh, another one, we, we have uh, the comment from Rakesh, and I think Shui and his team will also check the comment from Rakesh uh, later. Okay. But, but anyway, we, we needed to push these uh, PRs uh, to merge into the, the ABA3. Yep, so, I think there is one yeah. more PR from Rakesh about a verification plugin, which also needs to be pushed. So yeah. Um, this one, right? Yeah, this is, I think, waiting on Milin to review. He should get some time tomorrow or day after tomorrow, like this week to review. He haven't, I've just pinged him like where well, today afternoon he didn't got time to review, so he will be doing that this week. Okay. Okay, but uh, but uh, if it is this week, maybe it's too long time for, for the ABA 3. Uh, I think we can do release this on Thursday also, right? There's a Thursday call. Will that work? Uh, sorry? Uh, we also have a call on Thursday. We can do release on Thursday call. Well, I mean, uh, I think there's only the hold. The only holdup is uh, I think there was a couple of fixes that we we needed to merge. And I I think that may be done now. If I, I have to look at. Um, uh, so yeah. I think two PRs are open. One, one is from Lakesh, which is open, which Milind was reviewing today. He didn't give a ship it. Like he didn't give a approval on that. And I think there's one more, which is 294, which is pending. I think Rakesh did comment on that one. So I will ask him to look into that. There are two open PRs there. Yes. So um, is the, like, I mean, those two are the only thing that's, I mean, that does basically breaking the notation cert generate, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so there's there's only that. And I, so I don't know if we really need to wait till Thursday if we, if we merge those two, right? Yeah, I mean, yep. If we do that, yeah. Okay. okay. Also, I think we have internally ours. I think the ORAS library is not working with ECR. So we have asked help from Michael to if we can get timeline to fix for that also. But yeah, yeah I mean, we, yeah, we could, I mean, we could also like, um, you know, again, if it, because I'm sure there's more things that this is an alpha, right? More things are going to not be working. We're going to find more, more problems. I think if we um, can, <laughs> can get alpha three out the door yeah. as well. And then just have another one, um, even if it's alpha four or a 3.1 or a patch or whatever, like then then we can not be stuck. <laughs> sure, yeah. I mean, yeah, we at least, we still have like two PRs, so yeah. We can try. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think we, we need to make sure the very basic is working. Yep. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, these uh, two PRs I mentioned in, in the first item. Then for the others, we can address them uh, with later uh, alpha four release or, yeah, or anything with, else. Without this alpha three would be not, it would be unusable basically without 104 and 294, yep, I agree. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, thanks. The next item is uh, actually an issue reported by the dependent board. It detects an uh, and uh, dependency update. So it's better we can we can merge it as well, but if yeah. not, because it is not that critical by by the, uh, like the other tools. So 97 is ready to merge. We only, we are using LDAP only for, for verification in trust, stress policy. And I think Rakesh took a look at this today morning and he approved that PR, yep. Okay, so uh, this is ready for merge, yeah. I think. Okay. 
Okay. And the next, uh, uh, the third one is about uh, the release. So uh, according to previous uh, previous plan, uh, I will be responsible for release uh, the notation CLI and the notation Corco. But actually there are dependencies if we want to do the release for the all three repos. So actually notation Go uh, currently is taken by, by, by Samir and another uh, maybe new PM from, from your side. Uh, Walia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Walia. Uh, it, but actually, once we have this uh, notation core goal released, we need to do some update uh, in, in the notation go. Then notation go can uh, proceed to release. We need to update the dependency in, in the go module file. So yeah. uh, I would suggest that I, I can do the uh, release for all the three repos this time. Yeah, I don't like, I can't comment on this because I don't have any context what Samir was thinking about this or what, what he is working on. So I think it might the best bet would be to ping Samir for this on Slack. Uh, yeah, I already, yeah. yeah, I already asked the, uh, Samir about this, but I didn't receive confirmation. So, so I, uh, I plan to have this uh, during this meeting, but uh, he's uh, traveling. Yeah, so, so he, he would be online, like he would reply by tomorrow morning for sure because they were traveling today. So that's the only reason they they might not have connectivity. Mm. Okay, so like, uh, I, yeah, I, I will in the Slack uh, contact him and to okay. confirm this. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I can do that. Okay. Okay, these are the three items from my side. And then Shue, you have a spec update for the plugin extensibility. Uh, yeah, so I have a spec update for the plugin extensibility. And uh, if we click that uh, PR, uh, you will see the changes. So there are three major changes. Uh, the first one is we, uh, I have moved the uh, survey chain from the response of the gener gener uh, generate signature to the describe key. So we don't need to uh, to have a civic key every time we call the generate signature. So we can uh, get the civic chain uh, by calling the describe key. Uh, so uh, it's also good that you, that means you can get the certificate chain without generating any certificate, uh, generating any signatures. Uh, you, may see, you may say, okay, what about uh, how to uh, rotate the key? So, so if you want to ro rotate the key uh, with the certificate chain, we should use another key. Uh, even if we want to reuse the key ID, uh, we still can call the display key multiple times to rotate the key. Yeah, but like the corner case is like if they use the same key ID, we don't have control over it. It would just break because I think one signature would be generated with different certificate as compared to what was written by a described key. There's like edge case there. And that's the reason it was included in generate signature. Yeah, but because I, some of the KMS systems might allow the automatic key rotations. Yes. So for notation CLI, it's not a problem because we always call describe each time we sign, right? Yeah, and but what this is edge case, you know, right? When you when you call describe key and the, the time between the describe key call and the time and the, and there's a temporal difference between generate signature call. Then it's okay because we still do verification after the signature gener generation. So if we find okay, it's a mismatch, then we can drop it over, yeah, over but time. Right now, we don't verify signature when we sign it. We, we do. If you look at the spec, we do verify the signature uh, after gener after the parking generator signature, we do verify the signature against uh, using the uh, certificate. Uh, I mean, using the parking, no, sorry, uh, using the public key in the certificate chain. Do we check the validity? I don't know because. Uh, so, uh, uh, so uh, yeah, I was sharing screen. If you do, uh, can you go to the file changes? Uh, Uh, so, okay, um, scrolling down, 
uh, to uh, uh, step three. Yes, uh, scrolling down a bit. Okay. Yes, step four. As you can see, valid the generic signature return error if any uh, of the checks fail. Yeah. So we do verify the generic signature. We don't verify the signature is actually intact or it was generated with right certificate. And do we verify that the authenticity? Let me check. I'm just trying to read that. So well, we, uh, yes. We don't, we don't verify algorithm. We just verify payload was not modified. We don't actually do complete verification on certificate. Oh, nope. well, wait. So, yes, we uh, we only all verify the leave certificates. But when, well, but when you rotate your certificate and P, there's no meaning to oh, uh, rotate the, the root CA without no, rotating yeah. the leave certificate, right? So, we are not verifying that the signature was generated using the leave certificate. It's only the verification succeeds with the leave certificate. Are we verifying that? Like, I don't see that in this pack. So first one just says for signing algorithm. Second one just says that payload is not modified. That The third one? Yeah. Okay, verify that the hash of payload against the signature using public key of the leave certificate. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So so basically, the, the staff 4.2 verifies the signature. Yeah, and it will fail, and then customer has to retry it again. That's the only problem. Like it will fail, but still, just a retry. But the failure should not be there. So, like I like so basically, we are saying it's a false failure, but we are protecting against that. It's basically, technically, we are saying we don't support auto rotation of a of a certificate here. If we, if we do that, then there's a edge case where signing might fail because of a bug in notation library. Right? Even though we will we won't wind off the wrong signature, but the signing signing will fail. Uh yes, there was some will fail, but we uh we can detect it. But yeah, but um, Yes, and and, uh, and I'm not sure why we should reuse the uh, the uh, the key ID if we want to rotate the key. It does not make sense. If we rotate the key, we should uh, uh, not reuse the key ID because it's a different version of the key. Yes, it's just an ID representing to any certificate. Internally, you can just rotate. So key ID is not related to any key. It's just a pointer to any key, right? It's just a logical entity which we have created. That, uh, uh, okay, that means if we have two requests to a plugin using the same key ID, then we can result into two kinds of signatures with different uh, private key signing it. It's yep. make, it does not make sense. But technically it's possible. I mean, technically it's possible, but it does but not make sense. Right. Think like this. Yeah. For example, if you have allocated a key for some particular use, you just assign it a key ID and backend, you will have a system where you automatically rotate the key because key, like we want the key to be ephemeral, short-lived certificates, which you can rotate anytime. If you rotate, like for example, if some company is using short-lived certificate, like five day certificate, a week long certificate, they won't generate a new key ID every time. They will have a key ID and at the back end, they will automatically rotate the certificate for the team. Like that's the scenario I'm thinking about is the ephemeral certificate, which are like short leave certificates. Uh, I'm not sure it's a valid uh, scenario or not. Uh... That's, the, that's the only case I'm worried about that there will be a, a failure and it will be reported as a bug to us. Um... So, so uh, can I assume that uh, in AWS there is a such a scenario that uh, no, but we don't have it. It's just like so, like industries are moving towards short-lived certificates, right? So anyway, there will be, there can be a rotation scenario. 
we don't have right now we don't do anything but it's like it's quite possible and it will fail and that's the reason when they were like when Melinda was writing this spec we had the similar discussion that why we want to move the we why we want the certificate chain to be in signing as compared to key spec or the, the gen, describe key call we had the, I had the same discussion with Melinda it's like the corner case which we want to avoid Okay, so. So for example, I know in AWS KMS, it does it for symmetric keys, but I'm not sure about asymmetric keys. And I think most of the system, most of the key management system will do this. Yeah, but still it's not that make sense to me if we reuse a key ID for a different, a different property. key. The key wears out. Like the more you use signing keys, the less guarantee you have. Like the, the less safer it becomes. Key wears out eventually. So some like most of the key management system have a way to auto rotate the keys. Yes, I I know how uh, uh, auto rotate key, but I'm not sure if we reuse the key ID it's secure or not. Mm. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not sure it's very uh, whether it is a practice practice or not. So, so uh, re reusing the key ID for key rotation uh, may result that you are not sure uh, oh, you, are, you are signing with the old key or a new key. Basically, uh, so um, if, uh, if there is an emergency case that we are uh, rotating the key for emergency, but still it may, it's, uh, some uh, some component is still using the older key design stuff, but we never know. Uh, so usually because, because they are using the same KID. Uh, okay, let's look at this. Talk. So I'm. Uh, I think usually that's the common practice in cloud right now. I might be wrong. I will go back and check on that. But this is one of the article I found. Yeah. Basically, where you can uh, specify the vault name and there's an auto rotation configuration, and it will just automatically rotate the key. Yes, it's, but for uh, for agile key vault, uh, once we rotate the key, the key ID changes because we have different versions of the key, and uh, the key ID includes the version. Oh, so it's like it's the same ID. How will like how does customer refer to that key in their code? It's automatic uh, rotation. Uh, uh, it's not the same ID. The the ID is different. Oh, it's like, we don't use key IDs for code. It has to be subject name. Yeah, I said it's a link basically, right? That's what we have key ID notation. It's a basically a, a pointer to the key. No, it's like, I'm trying to drive an analogy here. Key ID notation is basically just a pointer to some remote key or local key. So key ID is like a URI or like basically it's just an identifier. No, so in notation, in notation, we are using key ID in a config as a pointer to something, right? There is, there is, so notation doesn't have a concept of any key. Uh, key. So basically, key ID in notation is pointer to something. And the same, I'm, I, I'm deriving the same analogy with key vault. Like, customer has to, you must be providing some pointer to a key, and key does the automatic rotation. I'm, I might be using the key ID as a wrong term, but I'm just trying to derive the, derive the same analogy. Like similarly, we have KMS where it does automatic rotation. I think it's yearly, but yeah, and it's just rotated on the back end the uh, keys. Or so basically, you can call it alias or pointer or anything like that. So, so basically, you still want to keep the uh, the specific chain, the response of the generic signature, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I like uh, there's no other way around that. If someone is using the short lived certificates, I don't see a good workaround. Mm. 
Okay. Um, so you want to silently rotate the key without notice. Um, I mean, it makes sense, right? For example. Yeah. Technically, it, 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 it's possible, but I'm not sure it's a it's a good practice or not. Uh, because um, from the uh, uh, from the notation side, uh, we don't know um, if the the signing key has been changed or not. Yeah, but it's it's the same anchor. Trust anchor has to be same. So I I'm not sure like what's the practice here, but we can talk to Melinda and I think more about this. That's, that's the same discussion I had with him. Shiva, can we uh, can we try authoring um, um, the plugin? And uh, once we rotate the once we rotate the key in in Key Vault, mm -hmm. um, do we have to change the notation trust policy configuration? Is the point here, right? Yeah, I think we need I, to that either way. Yeah, like because key key would be used as an anchor. It would be like some like leaf cert. The key would be used in the leaf certificate. If the root is same, we won't have to manually do it theoretically. Oh, uh, let me simplify this. Um, okay. Um, we, uh, we we still can keep the certificate chain uh, in the response of the generate uh, generate certificate, uh, but. Yes, uh, we need some hack in the uh, uh, notation Kogo, but it's still okay. Uh, uh, I think notation Kogo is written with the perspective that sign operation will return the certificate. Pardon? Uh, so in notation Go, the way we have written notation Go is it expects sign operation to return certificates. Yeah. It's okay right. because we, yes, we because we can always cash the uh, the certificate for a certain call, so it's okay. Uh, uh, so the thing is, like, we don't want to cash it unless it's like so. Uh, caching is the problem here. If we cash it, we have to somehow fail. If we fail it, we have to somehow dynamically get the new certificate also. So unless it's a CLI, so we should try avoiding caching anything here. Yeah, yeah, uh, yes. Um, but yeah. Uh, anyway, it's implementation details. So basically, uh, uh, once we call a uh, a call generate signature, uh, we will bind the uh, uh, certificate chain with the signature, but somewhere in the memory in a hacking way. Uh, yeah. So this is how I have done it. Yeah, I can just share the code link for that. Yeah, yeah, I I, I know that. Yes, but uh, as you can see, uh, uh, this sign method is not uh, compatible with the existing uh, Golang libraries. Uh, so, uh, so we need to do some hack uh, to oh, yeah. add some practice. Yeah, we have to define our own signature generator, or like we just cannot use the Golang interfaces. Yep. Yes, the, that's a problem here because we should use those crypto libraries instead of creating our own. Uh, yep, I agree, but <laughs> there is no easy way to do that. I agree. Yeah, yes, and, yes. Uh, it's doable. It's doable. I uh, mean, there's, there's a problem here is to different calls, which might happen at different time and which might provide different results. Uh, yeah, okay, it's doable. Uh, so, I, I will, yes, mm -hmm. uh, I will revert that uh, change. Okay. Uh, for the FIPS one, uh... yes, for, for for that one, the the, the second one, uh, the second one is that uh, I have changed the spec to uh, uh, to let the plugin accept the plug uh, to accept the payload digest instead of the payload uh, because the uh, uh, so uh, because for the cozy support, the Go cozy library only accepts the uh, digest. Uh, the Go uh, Cozy library cannot provide the original payload. Uh, why is that? Like I'm sorry, I have, I'm just curious. Why Go Cozy cannot take payload? Yes, uh, I mean the current library uh, cannot take the uh, payload. But we can always use Go Hash and just pass it to the Cozy library, right? Yes, but uh, if we want to do so, then we need to. 
uh, okay, so it, it, it's different thing. You, you may think about the, uh, the plugin invokes the Go Cozy. No, it's not. It's the Go Cozy invokes the plugin. So uh, as you can see in the Go Cozy, the signer uh, takes a digest instead of a, a payload. So that means uh, uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, the library will uh, send the um, uh, send the payload to the, uh, uh, I mean, send the payload digest to the plugin instead of payload. And the plugin does not have any access to the original payload. Yes, Chris, can we just take the, can we just create a digest before passing it to go for Z? I'm just no, curious. it's not. It's, it's not the plugin called Go Cozy. It's the Go Cozy calls the yeah, plugin. Yeah. When we call Go Cozy, can we just pass the digest instead of the payload directly? No, it's not. It okay. So it's the notation Go uh, pass the payload to the Go Cozy library, and then Go Cozy library do some magic and uh, calculate a digest, and it pass the digest to the plugin. Yeah, so what I'm saying is, instead of doing asking Go, Go, Go Cozy to uh, calculate the digest, we can just pass the digest as an input. So that do, so we say right, right now the only difference between we, the only delta we have is Go Cozy do not, does not calculate the digest, right? So what I'm suggesting yeah. is what we can do is we can just pass the payload itself as a digest. So we don't, Go Cozy doesn't have us to do that. Uh, okay, there are two problems here. Uh, the, uh, the first one is, okay, the current Go Cozy does not support that. If we want to support that, we need to uh, change the interface of the Go Cozy and uh, change its implementation and do another rounds of security review. And the second thing is, I don't think uh, 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 just uh, 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 passing the, the entire payload to the plugin is a good idea. Uh, currently, uh, our payload is very small, uh, relatively small. But what if in the in the in the future we are signing a large blob? Then we cannot just pass the the whole blob to the uh, to the plugin. It's not so, efficient. So one of the intention behind doing that was to allow remote service, which are already FIPS compliance, to do the hashing and signing. Yes, but yeah, as you can see, uh, yes, the plugin can be uh, uh, FIPS compliant, uh, but uh, because we still use Go Long Builder in libraries in the Notion Go, we're still not compliant of all. Uh, I think the for I might be using it wrong. Just don't take my word for FIP com, FIPS compliance. You just need only cryptographic module to be compliant, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, in the notation code, we're still using Go long uh, crypto modules, right? For validation, it, not for signing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But, but okay. So when you ship a product, we say that this product is FIPS compliant or not. We cannot say okay. The signing part of this. Uh, product is FIPS compliant. No, it's not valid. It's not a valid statement. I agree there. So we are saying that the generated signature is FIPS compliant using the FIPS compliance. Is not that right? Well, I'm like, I don't have much idea about FIPS, but yeah. <laughs> so when, uh, when we say a, uh, a product, is or a service is FIPS compliant. It means all the security modules are are FIPS, are FIPS compliant or FIPS certified. Certified. Uh, certified is a different thing, right? We can we won't go to FIPS certified. We call it a multi-year process, so we won't yeah. be doing any certification for FIPS for notation as of now. We're talking about oh. the yeah yeah. The so I'm saying this is all the component, all the crypto component. So um, okay. just in the interest of time, uh, what is the priority? Do we, is it about getting this merged right now or do we have time to kind of like circle back on this one? I think we already have one change which we made to do, to do so we can circle back on this one. Also we'll need one ship it from a maintainer, either Steve or Niaz also here even after this. So we cannot merge it today. 
Okay. Uh, of course, we're not marching today. Yeah, yeah. no, no. I think it's more about the discussion. <laughs> I don't worry about that. I, that's what that's what I was trying to find out. Is it something we have to get it done immediately, or it's fine to think about these things and it takes time to kind of circle back, right? All right. So yeah, okay. I just wanted to kind of like double check on that. Uh, was there any other item on the agenda besides this one? Uh, I think this one is the last one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we still have time. <laughs> Uh, should we okay, so for FIPS one, I can go back and read more about it, and I will come back on to tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. Is that fine? Yes, yes. Cool. Uh, yeah. uh, by the way, uh, so if we do really uh, consider the FIPS compliant component, uh, I also suggest that the plugin provider can just provide the uh, generate envelope capability. Yeah, that's true. So, so that means everything is. Yeah, can be controlled. Yeah. If I get... Yeah, I like I will have to consult our I have to find someone who knows FIPS in my org and I have to consult them. I'm not well versed with FIPS, but yeah. Yes. Uh yeah. Uh was there anything else apart from this in uh but by the way, uh, uh, so uh uh re regarding for the uh, payload uh, versus payload digest uh, is also a privacy trade off. So, if we uh, provide any everything uh, that is for payload to the plugin, then we are trust the plugin to not store the payload anywhere. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Yeah. So, um, it, I mean, it, it's a trade off. It's a trade off. Yeah, customer is trusting a plugin if they're installing a plugin on their host, then they trust the plugin. <laughs> Because you're giving the read access and everything, we are downloading a plugin. So I'm assuming customer trust that plugin. Yeah, uh, and and also uh, as I said, uh, that just uh, passing a payload is not efficient and it may slow down the process. Yeah. Yep, I agree. I will go and I will go back. I will, I will circle back on this. I will read more about the FIPS compliance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, the the third one, the third change is about updating the uh, the always the names. Uh, so basically, uh, for example, for uh, sh sha algorithms, that that's the hash algorithms. Uh, sha underscore, uh, for example, sha underscore two fifty six is changed to uh, sha dash uh, uh, two fifty six. That means all the uh, underscores are now uh, hyphens. Okay, can you point okay. me to which RFC calls uh, calls about that you have specified multiple RFCs? Is there any specific RFC or like the naming for the algorithm, digest algorithms? Okay, uh, so uh, uh, so e, can you open those RFCs? It's like what? Because, it's because one of them, are... Do I need to read everything there, or uh, I can just scan one of them? Yeah. And so it's it's uh, spread it in those RFCs. Uh, we can go through those RFCs uh, quickly. Okay. Yeah. Well, I can do it offline. It's fine. I can just scroll through all the RFCs uh, and see for, see for the words. Yeah. yeah. This. Uh, it's okay. We 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 have still we still have twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was thinking from the move from perspective of everyone that we everyone can get 20 minutes back and we can just do it. Just two of us can do the do these things. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a shot. That's you can see that's all happening. Okay. Uh, it's uh, obvious. <laughs> yep, yep, I agree. Cool then yeah, that, that makes sense. We can change hyphen uh underscore to hyphen there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um okay, uh, uh, next is uh yeah i think that's all right that's all the changes you made in yeah. the pr yeah no, uh, uh we uh, we also changed the the, the signal algorithms uh for example something like i say pss stuffs and something uh else uh -huh. uh, change to uh something like ps256 uh, yes this one uh 
Yeah, that's the name of the algorithm, right? Let's find. Yep. I think we already have. Oh. We already called this out somewhere in notation normals. Uh, so uh, originally we call them like RSA, SSA, PS, PSS, SHA-256. Now we just call it PS-256. And ECDSA SHA-256 is now called ES-256. And, and those names are not random names. Uh, those names are common in JWS, JWE, and also COSI. Uh, yep, I remember doing that. I just put the specific ones because we didn't want to tie our specification with a particular envelope format. That's why we were using RSA PSA short 256. And I think they are also pretty standard. Let me just check that. Yeah, I think it's pretty standard. It's not just JWS and JWE are using those terms, uh, but also other like COSI are also using them. Yep, that works for us. Anyway, in our algorithm spec, we have already called that out. I'm not sure why it was mentioned in plugin, but this is the actual spec which we have called out in signature specification, and we are calling them out as what you have written. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, those um, uh, so, those uh, stream values are only used for plugins. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's that was that's where it came from because we need something in plugin. So it was like, okay, let's use that. Yep, I agree. Yes. Uh, next thing is uh, about the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, stream values for the keys. So because we have changed the <laughs> The underscore uh, to hyphen, uh, uh, hyphens. Uh, so we also change the key spec uh, from the underscores to uh, hyphens. So uh, for example, I say underscore uh, 2048 to uh, I say hyphen or, or dash 2048. Uh, same thing for EC. Uh, for I say, uh, there's a standard that is called I say numbers. So okay. all the ISA numbers are uh, use hyphens instead of underscores. Uh, we don't have a standard for the EC keys. Uh, so I just created those uh, strings. Yeah, I think they are only used internally. So we are good. It's just used internally in plugin to notation client communication. Yeah. We'll update, we'll have to update our implementation with all these values. Okay, uh, so uh, okay, uh, let's uh, so let me follow up this PR. So uh, 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 the only um, um, thing we are not agree on is the the first one. Uh, that's the uh, changing the payload. Oh no, sorry, it's just changing the uh, certificate chain. Uh, I mean, that's changing the position of the certificate chain. Uh, so I will create another PR for that change and remove the change from this PR. Yeah, and for FIPS, I will get back to you in like one or two days. Yeah. Cool. I think that's all we had for today, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, you have mentioned that uh, uh, ECR does not work with ORAS. So can you elaborate on that? Uh, I don't have any context about that. You have to pick Michael. Okay. Like that's, I was in some chat, some chat conversation and that's where I picked it up. There was some discussion going on. I think there's an open issue. Let me just find it and I can ping you that. There's an open issue on Git. Uh, um, actually, there is an open issue on ORAS. Yeah, you can. This one? That. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. yeah. And Dave, I think uh, Steve have reached out to Michael and I, as well as me. Uh, but Michael uh, is requesting, uh, was requesting Lima from AWS to fix it. But it looks like Lima is still uh, on vacation. I'm not sure. Yeah, he was supposed to come this week, but due to some family emergency, he, I think there's, there's some family emergency. I think that's why he's not back. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, we are actually waiting for him to uh, resolve oh. the issue. 
uh, so so that auras can work on the ECR. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, next thing is about the uh, OCI artifact. Uh, because we still have time, we can discuss about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, currently, our uh, signature specification tied with the ORAS artifact manifest. Uh, uh, do we have any plan to update that with the OC artifact? Mm, I don't have any idea about that. Uh, so you, can you go to the- uh, Sure, I can, I, I, can, uh, I can ask Melinda and Michael about that. So yeah, I will do that. Uh, I think Samir so, might have the idea. I can we can pick Samir also. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I, I did uh, heard about that. There's some uh, different working group going for that, right? So yeah, that's the only context I have. Uh, Sajid, do you have any comments on this one? I think did we agree to I think they agreed to fix it, right? But uh, we agreed to have a soft uh, check only on this and not fail on this one, right? Uh, no, I, I'm not talking about this one. I mean, uh, oh, I mean another one. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so e, can you uh, go to the uh, signature certification markdown file? I'm sorry, so many multitasking things. Yes. So, okay. So, currently, the, uh, uh, as I said before, currently the specification is tied to the uh, ORAS artifact manifest. Ah, uh, yeah. But we are moving to the OCI artifact, right? Uh, uh, so, I have a meeting with uh, Lucky this week, and uh, we'll come up with a plan because there are many items that need to get changed, right? So mm -hmm. I wouldn't make a change or definition to uh, any of this specification until we have ironed out what the course of plan is. OCI is still uh, only in PR stage. They haven't taken the artifact yet, but uh, August 25th or 28th is what they are planning to make the proposal complete. So we should plan for maybe September, October to at least open the work items and define where we'll take it from there. So right now I wouldn't recommend changing anything. I hope that's that makes sense. Okay, so for RC one, we're still using Aura as architect. Right? Yeah, let's not change any plan until we've. Uh, OCI is a is a body we have to honor because Aura, the whole point of Aura is and it's committed to supporting OCI storage. So we'll have to implement that specification anyway. But whether notation wants to take a dependency on that, it's something that the notation project independently also has to decide. So like, I think ORAS will support both the current one and the OCI one. Those are discussions that uh, I think uh, I've started the thread with Shue and uh, Feynman. Uh, my thinking is the library can support both. There's nothing stopping the library from supporting both, but it'll make the code path a little clunky to choose the correct manifest, correct format and things like that. So we have to maybe, we have a couple of options. Either we, ship this whole thing with Aura support, uh, talk to Michael Brown and see whether everybody's comfortable with that. Or we make a call saying that, no, we're gonna go with the OCI manifest and then we make a one shot switch. Or there is even an intermediate path where we can support one RC, like RC with Aura's, but maybe have a special flag to experimentally use the new uh, OCI manifest or something like that. There are multiple proposals. None of that has been decided. Okay. Yet. Makes sense, yeah, okay. Uh, Shiva, does that kind of like roughly answer? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Stay course, don't change anything. I think uh, that's why I wanted, like I have, David and, and I have been kind of chatting on the side about figuring out what the plan is. Cool. Yep, sounds, sounds good. I think we're good. Give 10 minutes back. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.